So uh, we're going to travel, excuse me, all the hand surgeons, uh, from the hand up the arm. So we are going to look at the um, clinical trial. This is not an approved method of treatment. Clinical trial of using collagenase injection um, for frozen sho shoulder um, adhesive capsulitis. The disclosures are the same, and I would like to acknowledge uh, certainly uh, my colleague at Stony Brook, Dr. Edward Wong. Um, we form teams. Teamwork is essential for any studies of these sort. Dr. Wong is uh, the orthopedic surgeon on the team. And so as you've heard, uh, the collagenase injection therapy uh, was developed by us uh, at Stony Brook. Uh, for Dupuytren's contracture and, and was approved by our FDA and then across the world um, by the various uh, regulatory authorities. But um, we fully recognize that this, this, this enzyme, and it's actually subtypes of, of two collagenase en enzymes, has merit, we think, in, in a variety of fibroproliferative disorders, we think. And so this, this frozen shoulder um, disorder was one that caught our attention. And why? Because it involves also excess colla uh, collagen deposition in the shoulder capsule. And interestingly, it is about eight times more common in Dupuytren's patients. So we wondered whether a collagenase injection might lyse collagen in frozen shoulder, just as it does in a cord in Dupuytren's, and can it restore a shoulder range of motion? And very most importantly, uh, as this is a miserable and painful disease for patients, can it relieve pain? So Dr. Wong and I went about uh, doing two prior studies to the one I'm going to present here today. We first had to figure out where to safely inject it. And uh, many hours in the gross anatomy laboratory, we, we chose a site in the anterior uh, plane uh, between the bicipital groove and the tip of the coracoid process. And this was when the arm was passively externally rotated. So we worked that out. That we, we chose a spot. You have to choose some spot or a spot or two. So we chose this, this spot. And there we, we see a, a, a marking on a volunteer. And we did this little study. We wondered whether we could um, visualize under ultrasound, choosing this anterior spot, um, how the uh, fluid volume goes in. And this is essentially our um, injection tra track um, right between the two anatomic uh, landmarks. And we used what we considered a very safe needle because it has a blunt tip. It's, it's a spinal needle, and it is called a sprot needle, I think. So uh, we confirmed to our satisfaction um, injecting just saline in 10 volunteers without frozen shoulder, that this was an extra articular delivery method under ultrasound guidance. So the next study was, um, OK, we need to do some dose ranging. That's how usually drug studies start. And where should we consider um, Starting Well, we started with essentially with the same units that Dr. Hurst um, uh, mentioned in our deve development talk. And we, we, uh, we used it against placebo. So um, we went with placebo, a, a low dose of collagenase, and then all the way up to the clinically used dose uh, for Dupuytren's is 0.58. And then um, all patients, this was blinded, by the way. Um, all patients uh, did standard home uh, physical therapy exercises. And we only did one injection. And lo and behold, we determined that uh, the 0 0.58, in our estimation after this uh, study, was supposedly going to be the minimum safe 
and effective dose. So those are pre-studies, and this is what we were presenting today. Um, a 50 patient, uh, 40 female, 10 male uh, study of patients with frozen shoulder, and this was done um, at 11 investigative sites. 32 of them had failed prior um, conservative management, that is either steroid or PT or a combination of those two, and we essentially did um, a three-month fo follow-up. And our inclusion criteria were that uh, you had to have frozen shoulder just on one side. Uh, the duration could be between three and 12 months, and the restricted uh, active range of motion um, had to be uh, compared to a normal shoulder, and the deficit in the total had to be 60 degrees and at least 30 degrees in one of these motion planes. So a little bit complicated inclusion. So these are the groups that we put together. There are five cohorts of the doses that we used, but we've, we've varied volumes. So we see cohort one with the 0.29 in one, then the 0.58 in two, the 0.58 in one milliliter, and the 0.58 in a half millimeter. And we compared that to a cohort of patients who did exercise only. This wasn't placebo controlled. So uh, there were 10 patients per cohort. And our results showed that for active range of motion from baseline to 92 days, that the 0 0.58 per one ml dose showed the largest statistical significance in fl forward flexion and abduction. And there was a mean of uh, 2.58 injections per, per patient, meaning that most of these patients were, uh, were taking the allowed number of injections of up to three. So just as some cartoons, um, at baseline, this is where our uh, control group started at about uh, 113 degrees, and after 92 days, uh, they didn't get too much better, only about 12 degrees. And this is in contrast to the 0.58 milligram uh, per one ml group, so it was comparable baseline, uh, even a little less, 103 degrees. Forward flexion popped right up to almost, uh, well, 146 degrees, and uh, that's a, a, a f almost a 42% improvement. So this was a primary clinical efficacy measure. And again, just a little cartoon, this is abduction. You can see that the baseline in the control, the exercise group, was about 92, and um, they went up to about 108 after their exercise regimen, and that wasn't a large increase at all, only uh, about 17 degrees. But after um, the injection in the 1 ml group, for example, uh, they started at about 82, popped up to uh, about 136, and that was uh, a very nice, almost 66% um, improvement. So that was active range of motion, and this, these are the results in passive. Um, you can see statistically significant differences in forward flexion, um, abduction, and um, internal rotation, mostly in the uh, 0.58, 1, and 2 ml cohorts compared to the exercise only. And we use the American Academy of Shoulder and Elbow Surgeons uh, uh, questionnaire for pain and function. And again, you can see the statistical significance at the 0.582 and the 0.581 ml groups for uh, very nice um, pain and function uh, improvements in the patient cohorts in those groups. 
So adverse events, we, you know, as I made a joke, we, we write down everything. If patients sneeze, we write it down. So um, the events were essentially mild to moderate. Uh, they resolved without intervention in a mean of 14 days, and they mirrored the, the Dupuytren's disease uh, experience as well in that you might get a little bit of uh, pain and swelling, contusion, a lot of these ecchymosis, a lot of these terms are redundant because of the way our FDA makes us uh, uh, change, uh, uh, excuse me, write things down. No subject discontinued secondary to an adverse event. And very importantly, um, we, we, we thought to do MRIs at baseline and at the end of the study to, to, um, to rule out any uh, pathology other than adhesive capsulitis in the beginning and to assess for any uh, adverse events uh, after injections at the end of the study. And there were no findings of any MRR changes um, uh, including, uh, and everyone asked, well, did you have rotator cuff injury? And, and no, we did not. So in conclusion, uh, extraarticular uh, collagenase injections at uh, the doses of 1 uh, ml, 0.58, uh, especially that dose, significantly improved shoulder range of motion, function, and pain compared to ex exercise only. And the safety profile uh, was consistent with the known mechanisms of, of collagenase action. Most importantly, we've moved on. This is a phase 2A study that I've reported. A phase 2B study, which was larger, is just recently completed. So this was a 50-patient study. We've completed an over 300-patient study, uh, which is placebo-controlled, um, at 35 sites including the USA and Australia. And again, the push to make connections, especially at meetings like this, say hello to the colleagues in, in the front of the room, in the back of the room, and on the side of you, and uh, get involved in networking so uh, you can perform, if you can find funding, and we'll address that tomorrow, uh, larger data sets uh, with meaningful statistical results. And so again, I thank you for your attention and greetings from New York.